First of all, we thank God for this privilege that's been given us to come to your fair city and to this great congregation to share with you some of the things that we have studied from God's word. I appreciate the introduction uh, that was given by Chad. I hope and pray that the Lord will continue to bless me that maybe someday I can come up to what uh, uh, I need to be as a minister of the gospel. I, uh, the, the, I want to thank the brothers that preceded me by way of the song. Brother Mike Daniel is a superb song leader. You can tell that he knows what he's doing and how he can lift us up and help us to sing praises to God as best we possibly can do. And also, I want to thank Brother Tomlin, I believe that is, for the beautiful prayer, beautiful prayer that he sent up. Especially do I thank you for those special words that you spoke to our Father God in concerning me and that uh, I, I might be able to continue on uh, preaching the gospel until the Lord calls me home. I uh, want to thank all of uh, the congregations. Some of you may have closed your Bible study down in order to be with us and, and some may have slipped off, didn't cancel it, but you slipped off. And uh, that's the only kind of slip off that I would encourage you to get involved in. They said, because uh, we're not so much worried about them when they come to the, uh, from one congregation to the other to support a meeting. It's the ones that slip off, we don't know where they went. <laughs> That's where our problem started, is that right? So I, I certainly appreciate uh, everything, appreciate uh, all that is being done. Uh, in my interest and all of the good food, oh, it's just really being fed. I think uh, we, uh, Brother Chris had us out at Cracker Barrel, and, and it's just been steady. And then come back, and these sisters had all that fine food spread out. And I'd really been working. I talked to my wife today, and she was t uh, t talking to me about, you know, to kind of watch it and everything. But it's hard. And I tell you, if I keep on eating, I know, that, you know, when you're away from your wife, they say, you know, absence makes the heart go, grow fonder. And, 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 and I tell you what, uh, I know I love my wife and she loves me, but if y'all keep feeding me, she's going to have more of me to love when I get back. <laughs> Let's say something that kind of gets you ready for the message and get us in the mood. So <laughs> I truly thank you for what's being done, and I'm indebted tremendously to the elders of this church uh, and, and, and the members who are cooperating so beautifully again. And as I say, I hope that I'll be able to do my job as well as I can possibly do it. Now, uh, some of the old timers, like Brother Robert and Woods and some others, uh, uh, we, uh, we, we do our best when members are talking back to us, saying amen, amen. But uh, I don't want to intimidate you all. We just got one more night, and, and I appreciate if you say amen. Uh, to, especially when it's a point so clear that it needs the emphasis, amen. But I tell you what, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret, something that I learned, and it has helped me, preachers, uh, to be able to go ahead on if we don't get the amen. Uh, and I tell you what, I was told uh, uh, that there was a, 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 a preacher, a man used to walk, take a walk in the mornings, uh, and he'd walk down the street, and, and there was an old man sitting on his porch. Uh, and the preacher said, he said to the old man, good morning, sir. The old man didn't say a word. Uh, and he come by every morning. Good morning, sir. The man didn't say a word. So he got tired of that. This old ungrateful man don't even, uh, won't respond with, a, uh, with, a, with another greeting to me. So he stopped by that morning and uh, the old, uh, he said, good morning, sir, to the, this old man. The old man didn't say nothing. So he said, listen, I've been saying oh, a, a good morning to you, good morning to you, and you haven't said a word back to me. And he said, well, don't worry about me. You just do your job. <laughs> you, you, you saying good morning, just do your job. Don't worry about me. So 
So I learned that I can't worry about whether uh, the members say amen or not. I just got to do my job. Preach the word. And we appreciate it, amen, if we get it. And if we don't, uh, if it's right, I know it's pleasing to God. That makes it just all right. Now, uh, the lesson that I want to try to deal with tonight is, uh, is one that I think much of the religious problems that we have in the world today, if we would practice something that God has given us, we wouldn't be in this quagmire of false doctrine and teaching and more different denominations popping up. It wouldn't happen if we would respect something that God has given us. Uh, and for our subject, I hope we can stay with it. I want to talk about common sense in religion. Common sense in religion. And I think there are at least about three senses. Uh, Deuteronomy 29, 29 is a, uh, is a revealed sense. Those things that God knows that we don't know, but he's seen fit to reveal them to us in his word. Secret things that say belong to God, but things, you know, that, that, that are revealed, they belong to us. Uh, so God, we, I call that uh, the, the, the God sense. But God has been so gracious to us that he has given us something that goes with revealed sense. The apostles receive these things from God in Ephesians, the third chapter. You read several of those verses, and the apostle Paul was saying how that the Holy Spirit revealed to them uh, these things that God would have us to know, and saying they wrote them afore in a few words, whereby when we read, we can understand the knowledge of the mysteries of Christ. In other words, God's revealed will to us has been recorded and any faithful gospel preacher, if he has an opportunity, he's going to talk to you about some of the revealed will. But now there's another sense beside revealed sense. This is the sense that God has given us and I wish that we would use more of it. You'd be surprised how much false doctrine is being floated and carried about. People are being deceived because we won't use this other sense. And that's the one I'm keying in on tonight. Common sense in religion. God has given us common sense. And the only other kind of sense I know of is nonsense. And a lot of people use more nonsense than they do common sense. Nonsense, like I believe Psalm 14 and 1, said the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. Yeah, that's nonsense to say and believe there is no God. But common sense, uh, we, we ought to use it. God has given it to us. It's and, you, and what I like about common sense, you don't have to be highly educated to use it. If you just use it, I'm going to stir us up tonight. And so we'll start using it more and than we possibly have in the past. I read, I heard one of our preachers say many years ago, that was an old lady, an old black lady. She uh, took in washing and ironing. And way back there when you had to use the rub board and all that and washing shirts, things like that, it was hard work. And said so some little uh, city slick, Dude came by and saw her and with his suit on and his chain and all that. He told her, said, you don't have to be working like that. He says, I got something. If you take one, buy one of these from me. He said, you won't have to work no more. You have good look. Everything will come to you. If you just buy this from me, I got some good. And what it was, it was a, it was a, it was a rabbit foot, you know, on a chain. And she, he told her, said, now, if you just buy one of these, it'll bring you good luck. Now, she wasn't educated, anything like that. She just stopped washing, dried her hands on, the, uh, on her apron, and he said, listen, that rabbit had four feet and lost them all. How is one of them foots going to help me? <laughs> you know what that, that's common sense. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, you got to get, what, he, he lost all four, and how is one going to help me? That's what I'm talking about. If we would just use that kind of sense in religion, a lot of this, most of the denominational doctrine never could have gotten on all foot. Now, I, I, I haven't checked uh, close enough, but I know among the black people, I would say that most black folks religiously are Baptists. I could be wrong in that. We've got some more little fiery uh, denominations coming up that's claiming a lot of them but most of them are Baptists. Uh, and, uh, and then we have a world, a host of our white friends who are Baptists. And the Baptist church is one of the most prominent churches 
in America and in other areas of the world. But you know what? If preachers and people had used common sense, the Baptist church would not be in existence today. You say, ooh, that's all. I'm telling you, and when I make a statement, I, as I, I, I used to say, I, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I create some dust, I don't try to create no more dust than I can settle. <laughs> yes, sir. That's, that, that, you say, well, why would you say that? I say that because when you check the Bible, there's no way in the world that the conclusion could have been reached that John the Baptist or Jesus Christ ever started this institution known as the Baptist Church. And I'm not just picking on the Baptist, practically all of the denominational churches would be out of existence, not that great deep scholars, uh, uh, you know, had showed them to be wrong, just plain common sense. And so the first thing I'm gonna do, and I got some other things that people are saying uh, in religion, and the reason they're getting away with it, and some people are gonna be lost because they didn't use common sense with the information that was laid before them. And we all got it, we all got some. You know, ain't nobody here tonight that don't have some common sense. I may have a little more than others, but you got some. I remember Brother Keevil used to be preaching, and he said the gospel of Christ is so plain that a man, even if he was considered crazy, uh, he could get it. Some of it, he said he might catch it coming and lose it going, but he'll have it for a little while. And so <laughs> it's, it's that plain, it is that simple. Uh, but if you don't use common sense, then, the, then, then you're hopelessly lost, mixed up in denominational doctrines. And back to my point is that I, I, I picked the Baptist church because of so many of our folk are mixed up in it. And I just want to show you that if people would just think a little bit, it never would have happened. It couldn't have come into existence. It had to go come in with somebody taking their eyes off of common sense. Well, why do you say that, Brother Brinkley? First of all, there are three things that John the Baptist said concerning himself that shows me that, that there's no way if you just use common sense, you would say that John started a church. John the Baptist started a church. There's no way that you could say, get John the third chapter, brother, uh, and about the 23rd verse. I'm gonna show you three things uh, that show. And all you need is common sense with what John has said about himself and about his mission and other things that Christ said about his church. Now, this, and, 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 let's start reading there. Let's see if we can get those three things real brief because I have several of those things that I wanna point out where that uh, men are, the devil is getting away with a lot of false doctrine. And not because people are not Bible scholars, they just, they, they just won't use common sense. You, it's hard to deceive you if, uh, in religion if you just use a look of common sense with it. And I'm gonna prove it. And uh, we all right, brother, I want you to read where something that happened with John. I might tell you some of it. Well, start reading. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. All right. And they came and were baptized. Mm-hmm. For John was not yet cast into prison. All right, now listen to this. Read. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. Yeah. And they came unto John and, and said unto him. They told John what? Yes. Oh, here's what, it, it, hold, it, hold, hold it right there. Here's the situation. John had baptized over thousands. And of course his job, they, they, they didn't fully understand his job, but his job was to prepare the people for Christ, not for himself, but for Christ. And, 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 but they had fallen in love with John and what they saw, they didn't, they didn't like too much. When Jesus made his appearance, and he was beyond Jordan, and he was baptized, and he said, all men are coming to him. And you can just kind of watch it there, and then, and where, you, 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 you gospel preacher, you know where I'm headed, and you know where to come in at. But here's what I want you to notice. They, they were zealous for John. They, they, they didn't like that. They're leaving you going to him. 
You know, that was John's time to put his foot down if he wanted to have a church. Because he, he should have said, what? They're going to him? I baptized these people. I started this, this, this movement. And I'm not going to let nobody come in on me. Oh, that's not the way. If John had done like that and got the people all wrapped up in him, then uh, we could say that John, it was John's fault that we have what is known as a Baptist church today. But listen to John, what he said about it, and he gave three reasons uh, why he did not have a church. And if John the Baptist himself could not have a church, why do these men and preachers today try to make John have something that he didn't have? They only get away with that because they don't use common sense with what the Bible says about John. Now let John testify. What did John say about himself? Read. John answered and said, a man can receive nothing. A man can receive nothing unless it be given him from heaven. All right. I'm not the Christ. I hold it right there. I want to catch this part a little bit. John, John told them, said, I, 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 I've told you that. A man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. What John would say, I can't hold on to these people. I can't have my own faith or my own church. I prepared them for Christ. And he said, the only way a person can really have a church, uh, it's got to be approved from heaven. He said, man can only have that which was given to him from heaven. John was never given the authority to have a church from heaven. And he told them that. And, and, and so that should have nipped that in the bud of them so in love with John. They can appreciate John for what he did. But then uh, uh, to, uh, to gather around him and start a church around John, John said it straight. You can't, you can't have that, that unless it's given from heaven. And when John was saying that, we learn from other scriptures that there was somebody that was given to have a church. Am I right? Amen. How do you know? Because uh, even in prophecy, and I think the seventh chapter of the book of Daniel, if my memory is correct, uh, Daniel in a vision, he said, I saw one in a night vision, likened unto the son of man. He saw them, and he said, they brought him before the ancient of days. That was a, that was a, 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 a prophecy concerning Christ after he was resurrected from the dead, and he went back to heaven, and, 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 and Daniel saw it. And he says, this, this one was brought before the Ancient of Days. That's Jehovah. That's the Father. And it says when he brought before him, there was given him a kingdom. This kingdom was given to him. This kingdom was the church. It was seen in prophecy that God gave somebody the church. Get me uh, Ephesians 5. Uh, I believe we just go to 1 in about 22 and 23. What I'm going to show you, each one of these things that John said, uh, clear John, he didn't have no church. If the Baptist church or any other church exists today other than the church of Christ, somebody has disregarded the scriptures. And if you don't open your eyes and listen, uh, you, you will be hoodwinked. You will be deceived because John said, I can't have unless it's given from heaven. And Jesus was the one that was given the kingdom. In Ephesians 1 and about 23 or 22, start reading there. Yes, sir. A lot of this we would quote, I just want it read. Read. This is, this is uh, uh, what it said uh, about Christ. He put all things under his feet and what? And, and gave him to be head over all things to the what? To the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all and all. So Daniel saw it uh, in prophecy and said that this one was brought before the ancient of days, before Jehovah, and said there was given him a kingdom. Then Paul brought it out clearer what that kingdom was and put all things on his feet and gave him, that's Christ, to be head over the church, which is his body. The one that was given the right to have a church was Jesus Christ and not John the Baptist. John the Baptist made it clear, I don't have the authority to have a church. It wasn't given to me to have a church. And any church that exists today, honoring John the Baptist, you dishonor John. Amen. Is that right? John said, I, I, and, and that wasn't the only reason. That John, why were we there in John 3? The other reason John showed that I don't have a church. 
John the Baptist, he, what else did he say? Uh, John chapter 3. Yes. Verse All right, read. He that has the bride is the bridegroom. Uh, uh, the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and hear him. Yes. Rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Now notice this. this uh, John even used another analogy. First John said it wasn't given to me to have a church. It wasn't given to me to have this. And then he said, he that hath the bride is the bridegroom. He was talking about Jesus Christ. The one that's supposed to be, have the wife, which is the church, was Jesus Christ. Christ's supposed to have the church. Not me. Christ have the church. And he styled it like a marriage. Say he that hath the bride is the bridegroom. Well, John the Baptist, why did he come in? He's the friend of the bridegroom. He was the best man in this marriage of Christ and the church. John the Baptist was the best man. And therefore, uh, when the church is married to Christ, the church wouldn't go off carrying wearing John's name or John's title. That would be a violation of the law of common sense. Is that right? The bride, uh, the, whose name does the bride uh, carry after the marriage? The, the best man? Or the bridegroom? Who's the bridegroom? Christ. Well, if people go around and say, well, I'm Baptist. Well, you, 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 you run off with the best man. <laughs> Is that right? And of course, you can't blame John because he had already made it clear. that said, I, I, I'm just standing by. Uh, and so, so this, this is it's a violation to the law of common sense for the bride to wear the name of the best man. Isn't that a violation to the law of common sense? So then I say the Baptist church exists because people are not using common sense in religion. Had they used common sense, they would know that the church belongs to Christ. And not on, John not only said that, but he said some more. Let's read a little bit more about John. Then we get a little more serious in this matter. Read. He must increase, but I must decrease. John explained this, and I, yeah, they, they was upset because uh, they leave, they're leaving John going to Christ. But John said, I, I must decrease. I'm going. Read on. That's talking about Christ. He that is of the earth is earthly. You know, notice, holy fight right there. He had said, uh, uh, he uh, must increase and I must decrease. John said, in other words, don't be all wrapped up in me. Uh, try to follow me. I got you ready for Christ. He's the one that's got the bride. He's the one supposed to have the church and says, and I must decrease. But he's going to increase. Now I want to ask you this question, ladies and gentlemen, tonight. Suppose you had uh, it don't have to be a whole lot of money. Can it, be, it can be less than $100. Uh, suppose you just had just $100. They say it was two banks uptown, and you had $100. And one of the banks had a sign on it that said, we decrease it. We are going out of business. The other one bank said, we increase it. Now, which bank would you want to put your money in? If you had some money in the bank was decreasing, you'd get it out of there quick as you could. Why? You said, that's good common sense. Uh-huh. You know what? If people would use common sense and they're all of John, I'm Baptist, I'm John, I'm Baptist, they, they, they would get out of John quick as they could and get into Christ. Are you following me? He must decrease. I, uh, you know, but I must decrease. He must increase. John said that. And, and, and one other thing John said, read. He that cometh from above is above all, read. And he that cometh from heaven is above all. Uh-huh. And what he has seen and heard, that he testified, and no man received his testimony. John explain. He has received his testimony, has set to his seal. All right. John the Baptist says, I'm from the earth, earthly. But, but this one, the one that has the bride, has got to have the church, he is from heaven, but I'm of the earth. John was earthbound. And if John had a had a church, it'd be an earthbound church. Forget heaven. If you were in a church that John started, get a heaven. John, John, John was earthbound. But the one that's really going to have the church, he's from heaven. If I want to be in a church, I want to be in the church where the head of it is in heaven because I want to go to heaven someday. And Christ is the only one that can be head over church that's heaven bound. Amen. And to say, well, I'm going to stay with my church anyway. That is not good common sense. Is that right? A person, if he finds out his church is not in the Bible, and the scriptures show it, and he stays with it, 
that he's not even using the sense that chickens use. <laughs> Out in the country, where you have a whole bunch of chickens. You have a chicken house where a few of them can go in there to roost. But all that chicken they have out there, they can't all get there. So close to the evening and get close to night, the chickens start coming in, and, and uh, they got to have somewhere to roost. And uh, they begin to fly up a little bit on the little low, uh, low trees, little low, low, low trees and places, and, and to roost. And if you'll notice this, an old hen, especially if she's pretty old and pretty heavy, she might get on that limb and sit there a few minutes. If you watch her, then she'll maybe even fly off to another, just get to another. And two or three times she may do that before she goes to her slumber. You know why she's doing that? She got sense enough to know that some of them limbs may not hold her. <laughs> and she keeps moving about till she can find a limb uh, that she believes got to, can support her. She don't do like a lot of folks do. She doesn't say, well, a limb is a limb, just so I'm on a limb. She'll move till she get a solid limb. But some people, even if you show them that that church that they are in is not in the Bible, they say, well, I'm going to stay with my church. I don't believe in jumping from limb to limb. Well, you're not using chicken sense. A chicken got common sense. <laughs> Pretty stiff, isn't it? But it's the truth. So then if you find out the church you're in is not in the Bible, then keep moving till you get to the right church. And that's the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I have several things that I want to call your attention to that people, if they would just use common sense, these things never would have happened. We're just not using it. God give it to us, but we won't use it. Let's look at some of the doctrines that people have. They said, well, I really, it don't matter what church you're in, as long as you're serving the Lord. Church is church. Just as long as you're serving the Lord, it doesn't matter what church you may happen to join. The main thing is that you can serve the Lord. And sometimes they make this statement, which is as silly as it can be. It is not common sense. They say, you can work for the Lord in any church. As long as you're sincere, that's not common sense. If there's a man that uh, has some cotton in the field out there in Texas, they, 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 they really harvesting that cotton right now. And this man would say, look, I got one patch of cotton over here. I, I need to get it out of the way quick. And say, I'll give anybody $500. If you, and you all be able to do it in, in less than a day if you pick it. One guy said, well, I'll do it. He gets over there and he goes to picking. He starts that morning. Long about 12 o'clock, he's resting a little bit. And somebody sees and says, oh, man, you a cotton picking man. Oh, you picked all that much. Yeah, I did all this up to 12 o'clock. And he said, man, I'm, 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 Mr. So-and-so is supposed to give me $500 this evening. Maybe he said, Mr. Brown is supposed to give me $500 this evening. He said, Mr. Brown, that, that ain't Mr. Brown's fear. What? No, that's Mr. Thomas Field. Do you think he would say, well, I've been picking too long to stop picking here now? <laughs> you say, Brother Brinker, that's crazy. I know it. But a lot of people, when they find out that that church is not in the Bible, and you try to get them to move and get into one that's solid, that is Christ, they say, well, I've been in this church too long to be leaving. That ain't common sense. Isn't that right? And so if that guy is silly enough to keep on picking, because I just don't believe in just running from field to field, I'm just going to stay here. Well, when he gets through, and he goes to this band and says, well, I, I finished it. I want my $500. He said, well, I checked. You didn't pick in my field. How much would he owe him? Nothing. Well, well whose field would he find out he was in Brown's field? So he run to Mr. Brown and asked Mr. Brown to pay him. Brown said, I didn't hire you. He done lost out. Why? Because if he's silly enough after finding out that his, uh, 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 the field he's picking in is the wrong field and he stay with it anyhow, then he, he, he's acting stupid. He's not acting uh, with good sense. 
You say, well, I ain't heard it like that. But that's people are using, they, if they would just use common sense in religion, you can't work for the Lord in just any church. When one you can pick for somebody in just any field. Jesus hired laborers into his vineyard. Matthew, the 20th chapter. His vineyard. His vineyard represented his church. And as he hired laborers in his vineyard, uh, he was going to pay them because they were working for him. And he hired a bunch of people all along. He went for another hour. And it says, hired laborers into his vineyard, into his vineyard, into his vineyard. In order to get paid, they had to go into the vineyard where they were hired. To be saved, you got to be in the church where the Lord will save you. He has only one church. And unless you work there, you cannot make it. You cannot be saved. And to think that you can be saved by just going, uh, any church will do, then that's, that's not common sense. Any field won't do. Any limb won't do. Chicken sense. That, and uh, just any limb. Oh, he oh heavy hands. Yeah, well, I'm on this limb. It feels funny, but I'm staying with my limb. I don't, I don't, you say, man, no, 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 say, well, no hen would do that. I, I know it, but why do people do it? Y'all looking at me funny here. <laughs> uh, anybody else, Brother Chris, am I in trouble? What, what? Well, okay, I'm going on with this. People need to use common sense in matters of religion. I, you know, I, I'm amazed at how we stuck with it. I remember some years back, there was, there was one, 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 one denominational preacher. I can't think of his name right now. But he said that uh, uh, if the church didn't send him, I don't know what it was, $900 or how many thousands of dollars, he said, Jesus had said he's going to take my life. He's going to take me away from here. And, and he said, I saw a 900-foot Jesus. And he told me if I didn't get, raise enough money uh, for this hospital that I'm planning to build, uh, he would uh, take me away from here. And you know, people bought that and started sending them money. That wasn't common sense. Uh, was that Eric, was it Roberts, wasn't it? Or Roberts. Or Roberts called himself a healer. Lay his hand on you and heal you. Now, does it make sense for a man that called himself a healer, building hospitals. He ought to be emptying hospitals. <laughs> Come on here now. And for you to send him money to help him uh, build more hospitals than he's supposed to be emptying them, that is silly. That is not common sense. And that little simple thing that I told you, the denominational world is full of nonsense things. Well, what's the problem? People are not giving uh, using what God have given them. That's all mainly what you need. If you run up on somebody that's got the truth and you got common sense, or even tonight, you'd become a member of the Lord's church because everything about the Lord's church makes sense. And if you take your little sense and use it uh, uh, like you should, oh my, my, my. Some people say, well, the Bible speaks of many churches. I'd like to know where the scripture is. When the Bible talks about the church uh, uh, that, uh, in which Jesus was building, every scripture you find about it nearly is it. Before it was ever established, Isaiah said it should come to pass in the last day that the mountain of the Lord's house will be established on the top of the mountains. And it said, and it shall be exalted above the hills. And he said, all nations shall flow unto it. Now, how many is it? Come on, y'all, help me out here, I think. One, that's right. All nations shall flow unto it. And not only did Daniel talk about it, say all nations, or rather Isaiah, Daniel called it a kingdom, but the kingdom and the, and the house are the same, and we had the time, we could easily prove that. But Daniel says, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, and it shall not be destroyed, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these other kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Look, talking about the kingdom and the church, they're the same because when Jesus said, on this rock I'll build my church, Matthew 16, 18, gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and he said unto thee, Peter, I give the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of Christ and the church of Christ are the same. And when he said my church and he said the kingdom, they're not two different things. The kingdom of Christ and the church of Christ is the same. And he told Peter, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Peter used those keys on the day of Pentecost. 
Am I right? The preachers know about it. When he opened up the church uh, on, on the day of Pentecost, the people said, what must we do? He said, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sin. And on that day, about 3,000 was able to enter into the church because Peter had the keys of the kingdom, and he had the keys of the church. If the kingdom of Christ and the church of Christ are not the same, then Peter uh, burglarized the church on Pentecost. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. <laughs> It. It's always it. Ephesians 5, 25. Paul said, husband, love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not a spot or wrinkle, but that it. Look at all those it. How many of that? It. That's all it is, just it. And when Jesus himself said, Matthew 16, 18, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. it. Not T-H-E-M, them, but it. it. That's all he has. And, and you know, with all these hits that Christ has only one church prophesied, and when it was fulfilled, he has only one church. In this world today, there are many different churches, but he has only one. Amen. It. And you know what? People don't use common sense. They say, well, it might have said that, but who am I to say it could be Methodist, it could be Lutheran, it could be, who am I? He just said it. He didn't name it. Shame on you. To say when he said on this rock I'll build my church, gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He, and he named it when he says uh, uh, I'll build my church, gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He named it then. Come on, y'all, give me a little help. Yes, he did. He named it then. I, I'll give you some example. In Matthew about 26 and about 30, several of those verses there, uh, when Jesus uh, was instituting the supper to his disciples, he said to take of this, and so he said, this is my body. He called this my body. And they were to use that bread to represent his body. And he called it it. He also said, this is my blood. Not his literal blood, but he used I-T, it, talking about the blood. Is that right? When they said my body and my blood, whose blood was he talking about? The blood of Christ. Am I right? When he said my body, he was talking about the body of Christ. Jesus even said it in Matthew 16, uh, 18, 16. 17 and 18, he said, uh, Blessed are thou, Simon Bar Jonah. Flesh and blood have not revealed this unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. Every time, one time Jesus said, spoke of my body. And he said, My blood and my Father. Now, when Jesus spoke of my blood, whose blood was he talking about? Y'all got to help me out here now. He was talking about, when he said, My blood, he was talking about the blood of Christ. Is that right? All right, then, when he says, my, uh, my, my, my body, rather, the, body, the blood, I got the mix there, but it should be the body. And then he says the blood. When he said my blood, that was talking about the blood of who? Well, another time, just before Jesus pronounced about his church, he said flesh and blood have not revealed this unto thee, but my father. When Jesus spoke of my father, who was he talking about? My father meant the father of Christ. Is that right? And my blood meant the blood of Christ. And my body there meant the body of Christ. And when Jesus said on this rock I'll build my church, that meant the, come on here now, you see that. The church of Christ. My body meant the body of Christ. My blood meant the blood of Christ. My father met the father of Christ. My church met the church of Christ. And that's all he built. And if that's all he built, then what are preachers doing? And people say, well, I think you ought to go to the church of your choice. You don't have a choice when there's only one. Is that right? If I was selling watermelons and, and I passed through the town and brother, my buddy there, Brother Robert, uh, said, what you doing, Brink? I said, I'm selling watermelon, man. He said, I love them. The Brinkley said, I'd like to buy one. You don't have to buy a watermelon for me. You know me. You, you, you just take your choice. 
He goes out to the truck, just get your choice. I'm not going to limit you. You, you my best friend. Just take your choice. And he throws the canvas back. Had that on the keeper for get the miller from getting too hot. And lo and behold, when he threw the canvas back, ain't but one watermelon under there. Does he have a choice of melons? About the only choice he has is to take it or leave it. Is that right? We have no more choice of churches than he would have of watermelons. It is one. And so why are you going through all that for Brother Brink? I say people won't use common sense. Common sense ought to tell us how many churches the Lord have yet. And common sense ought to tell us the name of that church. It's his wife. It wears his name. That's a beautiful thing. I wish Sister Brinkley was here tonight. And if she was here, naturally I would say, I want you all to meet my wife. So like Jesus said, I'll build my church. So I'd like for you all to meet my wife. I want my wife to stand. Now, if she didn't get up, I figured she didn't hear me. But I give her another chance. I said, I want my wife to stand. And if she didn't get up then, you know what? When we get back to the, what you call it, the Hampton Inn, she's going to have to explain to me why she didn't get up because my show ownership. Is that right? On the other hand, if I said I want my wife to stand and some other woman that jumped up instead of Sister Brinkley, I would have to explain that before we got back to the Hampton <laughs> Is that right? Oh, I'd, I'd have to hustle that when that's on. So my, my show shows ownership. Uh, 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 let's, let's look at a few more things here. What I'm doing, th these all tie in with common sense. After all this, in the name of Jesus Christ, we're to preach in his name, his name. There's salvation in no other name than the name of Christ. And with all these scriptures showing the name of Christ, people pop up with names of different men and different things rather than Christ like it doesn't matter. And guess what the preachers say, many of them? They talk nonsense. This ain't nothing in a name. Name don't mean nothing. Long got Jesus in your heart. I didn't get over. Hey, you call yourself Baptist, another Methodist. That don't mean nothing, nothing to the name. As long as you got Jesus, name don't mean nothing. And you know, they swallow that. Okay, amen, that's right. Church of Christ, if you're there, Methodist, it don't matter. Ain't nothing in the name. That's nonsense. Right. Why? Brother Brinkley, I say it's nonsense. All you have to do is run a test on them. This is Cuba coming out of me now, Robert. <laughs> All you have to do is run a test on them. Let's see. Uh, where my crayon is? Got to bring this one out. I dropped it somewhere. All you would have to do is run a little test on them. He said, oh, nothing on the name. Name don't mean nothing. Suppose that preacher that said that, or anybody that said that, name don't mean nothing. And they come down with a, a severe cold, uh, and uh, somebody tell them, say, well, if you take this right now, take your little quinine, so that'll knock that cold out. And I came before you wearing my cream. And, I thought it dropped it. Oh, on the floor. Okay. There you go. All right. And, and, and I said, oh, I got some. And I have two bottles before them. One bottle said quinine. The other one said strychnine. <laughs> Do you think when they look at that and say, which one you want? And I act like I'm going to hand them a strychnine bottle. They won't say, oh, well, nine is nine, strict nine, quite nine, name don't mean nothing, just, just as long as it's medicine. They need, they need to go to a mental doctor. Is that right? Oh, they carry on offer. They was quinine, strict nine, what the, nine, nine is nine. Oh, no. Church of Christ, Baptist, medicine, don't mean nothing. That's foolishness. Jesus said, there's no other name under heaven get among men. Whereby we must be saved. So then, my lesson is, we need to use more common sense in religion. Common sense on the name of the church. Common sense on the worship of the church. All this stuff that they do, they don't use common sense with it. You have women pastors 
He asked them, said, where do you get that from? They said, well, uh, uh, Paul, I know you say, Paul said, let your women keep silent in the church. He said, but uh, that, that, that don't really mean that. He said, uh, you, 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 don't, you, you can still uh, uh, be a woman preacher uh, uh, if you don't meet some requirement. If you're not a man or something like that, you can still be one. That, that, that's, that, that's foolishness right there. You can tell that. But you'd be surprised what some people say to try to get around it. Uh, and uh, when Paul said, let your women keep silent in the church, you know what they do, brother? They talk nonsense. And he said, well, uh, if you want to know anything, let's ask your husband at home. And he said, but I don't have no husband at home. They're trying to argue and say, well, they don't have to pay that no attention. If I, that's for people, women to have husbands. If you don't have no husband at home, then just go ahead home and speak out in the church. But oh no. He said, well, uh, but you don't have a husband at home. Well, there's a scripture somewhere. I, I can't call them up as quick as I like, but it's not critical that you, you can find it. Where Paul was talking about women and how they to do, young mothers, he told them to do two things, two th do two things uh, to, to, to love your husband and your children. He told them to do both. Uh, well, suppose you don't have any children. Does that mean well, you don't have to love your husband? That's foolishness. Well, what do, if a woman is told to love her husband and her children, she don't have any children, what does she do? Do the part she can. You got a husband? Yeah, love him. Is that right? right. Women keep silent in the church. It's not permitted for them to speak. If you want to know anything, let them ask their husband at home. Well, what if you don't have a husband? Do the part you can. What's that? Keep silent. There's two things. Keep silent, ask your husband at home. <laughs> and so what do you do? Do the part you can. Is a woman not to love a, 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 a husband because she doesn't have any children? Do the part you can. The reason I was showing you that is that the denomination of the world, God doesn't give us these good minds, and we let these old false teachers pull the wool over our eye, but not using common sense. Much of the problem in religion it, it, it's common sense. Something as simple as the kind of music that the Lord wants in the, in the worship. He made it clear, John 4, 24, Jesus said, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. In other words, for your worship to be acceptable, you got to have the right object of worship and it must be God. Can't worship man. Apostles, no men. And you see silly people, when the Pope comes through, they're just buying down and want to try to get the children so they can kiss him and all that kind of foolishness. You're just a man. Amen. Amen. Y'all mighty quiet. But they just will not recognize what the Lord has said about those matters. Uh, we are supposed to respect him in, 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 in every way and don't look for little old silly loopholes to get away from it. Something as simple as uh, the kind of music. Speaking to yourselves in songs and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord. That's plain right there. The kind of music that the Lord wants is singing. And we worship God in spirit and in truth. Truth is his word. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And uh, how do we know that we're not supposed to use pianos and organs and drums it doesn't mention all those things. What makes us know we can't do anything but make music, vocal music? Because that's what it said. Singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Somebody say, it didn't say nothing about not to play. Well, that's not common sense. When God told Noah to build the ark, he named the kind of wood. He said gopher wood. He didn't have said, I want you to build it out of gopher wood, but don't use oak, don't use, don't use cedar, don't use pine. He didn't have to say all that. Come and sit tell you, said, if he said oak, that knocks out cedar and pine. Am I right? Amen. If he said us to sing, Ephesians 5, 19, Colossians 3, 16, sing, making melody in your heart to the Lord, singing, and that knocked out plucking, that knocked out blowing, that knocked out beating. Right. Didn't gopher wood knock out pine, oak, and cedar? Singing, knocked out, beating, blowing, and plucking. See, how you get that? Now, I don't have to be no deep scholar to, to understand that. That's common sense. Is that right? 
But he didn't say not to. That is not common sense. If one of you young per persons were to, your mother sent you to the store and said, I want you to go up there, I want you to bring me back a mop and a broom, uh, and I want you to bring me some washing powder. And the child come back with a mop, broom, washing powder, and a, powder, and a, a, a pocket full of candy. Mama said, I told you to bring this mop, broom, and watch by What are you doing with this candy? And you got candy in your pocket. You didn't say not to bring no candy. Boy, she a wet. Get him out. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of people going to get wore out at the judgment. So smart. They, 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 they don't want to respect the silence of the script. God tells you what he wants you to do. Once he tells you what he wants you to do, he, he don't have to say all that other Singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord, Ephesians 5, 19. But don't pluck now. Don't blow now. Don't, that's foolishness. If you all could be up here, you see what I see. <laughs> Y'all really looking serious. Some look a little funny, but I ain't gonna. Okay. okay. All I'm doing is showing you that the way is simple, but we just won't use common sense. Right. And the wisest thing that you could do is just do what the Bible says, like it says it. That's Church of Christ, what it's all about. We call Bible things by Bible name. We do Bible things in Bible way. We speak where the Bible speaks. We are silent where the Bible is silent. That's good sense. And this is the sensible church. It's the only church that makes sense because it's the one that Jesus said he would build. And he said that we labor. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Be steadfast and unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. What does it mean to be in the Lord? To be in the Lord means to be in his body. To be in his body means to be in his church. If you want to get paid for your religious labor, you got to work where the Lord assigned you. You can't be picking in John's field when Bill is the one that's supposed to hide you. You're going to mess yourself up. You're going to lose out it both ways. Amen. You said, man, well, I, I, I got a whole lot of more stuff here I can bring about, but this is enough uh, for me to to end on this particular thing. If you want to be saved, let me say this. The way of salvation is so simple and so plain. If these preachers had not confused people with all these different kind of ways, this is how you, you get into Christ. I was listening to Joel Osteen. Oh, Joel's in trouble now, ain't he? You didn't know about it. Yeah, Joel, he really told his fans good here. Joel Osteen is talking about the apostles and said that the apostles are uh, they were wrong in the thing that they preached. And they, Paul, Peter, and them, they need to be rebuked. Isn't that ridiculous? Oh, yeah, you saying that. It's out there. Uh, this young man, he, he got it for me. He lifted it off of the internet. I got it somewhere. He got it for me. Uh, but uh, uh, they, 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 they just fail to respect what the Lord has said about the church, about salvation. And you say, well, what do I have to do to be saved, Brother Brinkley? Okay, I'm going to give it to you. And all you have to do is use common sense. You can leave with me here tonight a member of the Lord's church. Saved on your way to heaven. How can that, is that, is that easy? Yeah, uh, if you use common sense. Jesus said, John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he will be saved. I am the door. Now, we know that Jesus was not a literal, you know, door like those doors there. Common sense ought to tell you that. You, I don't think you would think that. But then when he said, I am the door, he simply mean coming to me and entering in. And to be saved is sort of like a door. But what about a door? If you want to go in and get the benefits that's behind the door, you're going to have to respect the door. If you go any other way, you're like a thief and a robber. Is that right? Well, what do you mean respect the door? This is, this is simple. You might go and there's a door, and that door says push. Well, don't you be up there pulling. 
you just yanking and pulling. Somebody said, what's the matter? You sweating? I said, man, what's the matter with you? I'm trying to get in. Well, quit pulling and push. Do what the door says. Is that right? Jesus said, I am the door. If he's the door, we got to do what the door says if we want to get in. And it is a violation to the law of common sense to ignore what the door says. And what does the door say? When Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Not only did he say that, but he gave us several steps that we must take. The first thing one has to do is to hear the gospel of Christ. We must hear the gospel, Acts 10, 34. We must hear it. Then we must believe the gospel with all our hearts. Jesus said, except you believe that I am he, you'll die in your sins. Then after that, you must repent. That's the hardest part. We've been uh, hoping and praying that somebody would be baptized into Christ. And somebody said, well, they, they just don't want to be baptized. They don't want to go. That ain't what the problem is. The problem is repentance. They don't want to quit that devil man. Or that's something that they love better than to do the Lord and the sacrifice he made. No problem going in the water. If you get a man to repent, he'll go in the water. A woman to repent. They'll go into the water. Repentance is the hardest part. And I tell you what, some of the people that do give the church the biggest trouble is that we, we can't read their heart even when we baptize them if they respond. But some give us the biggest trouble, we find out that they didn't repent. They, 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 they slowed down their wickedness, went under the water, and come up and pick back up where they started. That is not repentance. Repentance means you got to quit your devil, man. Not slow down. You got to repent it, uh, uh, to stop. And that's why we, have, we even have some trouble in the Lord's church. And, and you can tell a lot of times some that haven't really repented because they're steady reporting. When a brother says, get up and I've sinned church and I want y'all to forgive me. And he won't even show up that night. Sunday morning, not that, that night. He's not repenting. He's just reporting. And if you've been reporting from now on, if you're a member of the Lord's church, you better quit your devil man. Because that's what it means. But in order to be saved, you must repent. You must turn from all that you know is wrong. If you're willing to repent, then after repentance, confess the name of Christ before men, Matthew 10, 32. And the final step is in baptism. Mark 16, 16, Jesus said, He that believe it is baptized shall be saved. Tomorrow night, I want to bring a little bit out on that about baptism and being saved and uh, uh, guys like Joel Osteen, he would never go through all this kind of stuff. He said, all you have to do, I'm going to pray this little prayer. He said, I never like to close without praying for the sinner, this little prayer. Something like that, he said. And he'd pray about the Lord forgiving them and saving them. And when he gets through, he says, now I believe you've been born again. Jesus himself said in John 3, except a man be born of water and the spirit. And he's standing there and telling these people when they get through prayer, they have been born again. And they just dry as a powder house. They haven't got it wet. And they fall for that. You cannot be saved without going in the water of baptism. That's where the Lord takes away your sin. The blood of Christ is applied to your soul. So I don't see no... Uh, no, uh, uh, no, 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 no blood in there. And I'm glad that you don't see it because some people be saying, well, it's too bloody and all like that. It does not have to actually be that, but it is applied. You can't separate the water from the blood. But in baptism, all your sins are washed away. You must believe that by faith. You don't see them uh, floating under the water. I heard a story once about an old tramp came forward to get baptized. You know how the old tramp used to be, have all kind of bags on itself and stuff. And when he went on and come up, he used the same old clothes. He said when he came up out of the water, it said uh, uh, different stuff was coming out of his coat and things, floating in the water. And somebody said, better take him down again. He said, sin is falling from him by the bundles. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> That's not the way it goes. You don't see that. The, the, the actual sins, the blood of Christ is applied, taken away, never to uh, come against you in this world, not a world to come. And in that automatic action, the Lord saves you. And in the same process, he adds you to the church. What church? That church that he built on the rock has been in existence uh, for over 2,000 years. Started on Pentecost. You can be a member of that church tonight. And good sense will tell you to come on and do it. 
nonsense, failure to use common sense. I say, well, I, I better wait. I better wait. Don't put it off. Now is the time. Today is the day. You may go to sleep tonight in this world and wake up tomorrow, uh, uh, later on tonight in another world. You may talk a little bit about some of that tomorrow. It can be very frightening, but it can be very sobering. But if you're here, you need to be saved. I don't think there's any excuse, there's nothing that you can come up with that will excuse you from obeying the gospel of Christ uh, because the price that was paid for you. Give up everything. Turn from everything. Give your life to Christ on his terms through those simple steps. Faith, repentance, confession, and baptism. That's the changing point. Into Christ. Add you to the church. You become a Christian, Acts 11 and 26. That's the name that you wear. And if you be faithful unto death, you will receive a crown of life. If you reject it, then you must know something we don't know. Do you know you're going to be here tomorrow? Do you know that? Well, I don't know. Well, you'll risk your soul. It's not good common sense to risk the most precious thing you have. I don't care what it is that's keeping you out. It's not worth risking your soul. I need an amen because I'm closing. And if you're here, man, woman, boy, or girl, I know you don't have any strain on your intelligence to understand what I talk. I had to pot down where everybody could stop tonight. And if you're willing to come, this invitation is for you. We're standing for you. And we're going to ask our able song leader to come on and give us a song. It's an invitation. And if you're a member of the church and you have not been living right, then you need to repent uh, of your sins. That's a dead pool on the church when they're members in here not living right. And the world, they don't read the Bible, but they're reading you. They know some stuff. If they know some things about you, you hurt the whole church. Then you need to quit your devil, man. Jesus gave his life for you. He suffered and died to take away our sin. But he will not wash away sin you're not willing to repent of. you got to repent. And so if you're here tonight and you haven't been as faithful as you ought to be, this is your opportunity to make the confession. Well, I don't worship at this congregation. If you're in the Lord's church, the word will get back to them and, and, and people will see. And that'll be a testimony for you in the judgment that you turn from your wrongdoings as a member and got yourself right. So it's a double invitation for those that have never been baptized into Christ and those that have strayed away. We beg you tonight, please come while we together stand and sing.